So now that we've talked about Java virtual threads, let's talk about the next set of interesting features that have been added to Java in Java 19. And this is what's called structured concurrency. And it allows for concurrent processing of many tasks in parallel using what's known as a structured concurrency programming model, which is deliberately named to co coincide with structured programming, if you're familiar with that. And I'll talk a bit more about that in just a minute. So structured, structured concurrency was added to Java fairly recently as a new concurrent programming paradigm. It's actually been around in other languages for a while, most notably Kotlin, but some other ones as well. And you can take a look at this link to find out more about how structured concurrency is designed. The goal of structured concurrency is to make concurrent programs easier to read and write, easier to understand, and safer. What does safer mean? Well, safer means avoiding thread leaks and orphan threads. We don't want a situation where one thread creates another thread, it goes away, and then this thread becomes an orphan and it leaks. That, that is perceived as a problem in lots of different contexts. We want things to be more structured, and we'll talk about what that means in a second. In particular, a structured model means that the lifetime of thread one and thread two are constrained to the scope in which they're created, much like the way in which structured programming keeps things nicely organized with control constructs like if statements or for loops or switches and so on and so forth. Java's structured concurrency implementation makes the start and end of concurrent code explicit by using essentially block structured formatting. And we'll take a look at this example in more detail here in just a bit, but at a high level, what's going on here is that we have a new capability called a structured task scope, and we can make an instance of one of these things, and we can use it in the context of what's called the try with resources block. So a try with resources block was added actually a long time ago, but it allows the scope of something to be controlled by the block in which it's created. And so when something leaves the scope, anything created inside of this little try with resources syntactical section will be auto-closed, it'll be shut down. And we can then go ahead, once we're inside this scope, we can go ahead and start new virtual threads by using a fork call, and we can do computations. And then at some point when we're done, we can say, wait for everything to finish. It's a little barrier synchronizer that waits for everything to finish and then joins all the results. And then after everything's finished, we can go ahead and print the results out. And the close method of the scope is automatically called when this block of code exits. So the idea there is to bound the scope over which things can run. Java structured concurrency is designed to provide several guarantees. One of which is when a program's flow of control is split into multiple threads, like we just showed before, you can take one thread and split it up into multiple threads. These threads always complete when the block, when the flow is done. So when we're done computing all the processing in thread T2, thread T3, and thread T4, then they will join back together again, and T1 can go on its merry way with the results of those other threads running their computations. So all the threads have to finish by the time the scope is exited. So that's what makes it structured, in quotes. And as a consequence of this, there will be no orphan threads. So you can't, if you, if you limit yourself exclusively to the structured concurrency mechanisms and you don't just spawn a thread willy-nilly in the middle of this block, then you won't end up with orphan threads. They'll all have been joined and completed by the time you exit the scope. And it's widely perceived that this makes programming easier. This paradigm, as you might expect from the name, is designed to mimic structured programming, which has been around forever. Well, not forever, but since like the early 60s, people have realized that having wonton, spaghetti-laden control constructs full of go-tos was a bad idea. So we came up with things like if statements or while loops or functions where you can treat these as black boxes. And that's much the idea of structured concurrency. You can have a black box where you enter, computations get done concurrently or in parallel, and then when you're done, when the scope exits, everything's cleaned up. Java structured concurrency is really designed for embarrassingly parallel programs. We've seen this concept before when we talked about Java uh, parallel streams. And an embarrassingly parallel program basically doesn't have any dependencies or need to communicate with other concurrently executing computations. 
They can all start up at the beginning of the scope or at some point near the beginning of the scope. And then when they're done with the scope, they can be joined. And then when the scope exits, they're all done. So my favorite example here is the washing machines or dryers you might have in a dorm or a laundromat where you can run everything in parallel and they don't depend on each other. The wash doesn't depend on another wash. Obviously, the dryer can't start till the wash is done. But that's just a two-phase example of embarrassingly parallel tasks. So that's the end of the overview of Java structured concurrency. We're now going to talk in more detail about the specific mechanisms they provide, and I'll give you a little bit of an assessment of whether they have actually done something useful or not.